Hello, uh, welcome back. So we're going to pick up right where we left off on problem one. Uh, in the first video, we covered parts A and B, uh, went over the components of the data set, uh, identifying elements, variables, uh, and individual observations within that data set. Now I want to look at part C, looking at different measurement scales and uh, identifying variables as either quantitative or categorical uh, in part D. So again, before we really apply this to our data set that we have in front of us, let's first look at you know, what, what do we mean when we talk about a measurement scale. A measurement scale uh, is, is really a scale that is used to identify the amount of information contained within e each variable. So there's, there's four different levels uh, on that scale. Let me just scroll down here a little bit and uh, we'll go through what each of these different levels are. So the most basic kind of variable, the one that contains really the least amount of information, uh, is what we call a nominal variable. So a nominal variable, uh, it's, uh, it can be text, uh, it can be a numeric code, uh, and it provides really nothing more than a label. It can be a label, uh, or it can be a name of something. Okay, so for example, uh, your name, my name, uh, can be a, is a nominal variable. So my name is Peter, your name is Tony, right? So there we've got uh, a, a nominal variable. Not a great deal of information, just a name. Uh, I can convert this from text to a numeric code, then say your individual number one and your individual number two. I haven't changed the meaning of the data. Uh, maybe I've made it more anonymous, but there's there's really nothing else, uh, nothing else there. Okay. The next variable, in terms of the amount of information that it contains, uh, is what we would call an ordinal, uh, an ordinal variable. And this contains all of the characteristics of a nominal, plus, uh, as the name sort of suggests, now the order matters, or they can be ranked. The ranking of individual data points uh, has some additional meaning. So let's say, for example, um, let's say you're asked to evaluate the entertainment value of these statisticsworkbook.com uh, videos. So maybe that's uh, maybe it's boring. Hopefully, it's not too boring. But maybe it's boring. Maybe it's okay. Uh, maybe it's fun. Maybe it's entertaining. Maybe it's the best videos ever. <laughs> Optimistic. So this gives us a scale. Uh, it's it's a non-numeric scale, but I can easily code this, right? This can be one, two, three, four, and five. I can assign a numeric code for it. It doesn't really change anything, but I can now uh, compare different videos. These ones are, are entertaining, these ones are boring, these ones are fun, these ones are okay. I know that the order, the rank of those individual data points has some meaning. The best videos ever are more entertaining than the boring videos. Okay, so I've got some meaning now to the order uh, of those individual data points. Okay, the next type of variable in terms of the amount of information that it contains uh, is an interval. Uh, an interval variable. So an interval variable, again, these all build upon each other. It contains all of the information of an ordinal variable, uh, with the exception that it has to be uh, numeric only. Uh, it can no longer have a text value in an interval, and the primary reason for that is the differentiating characteristic between an interval and an ordinal variable is that the interval variable uh, now includes information uh, in the difference. So now the difference between any two values uh, matters and has a meaning uh, all on its own. So I can't really look at the mathematical difference between um, Peter and Tony, for example, or entertaining and fun. If we look at the numbers, 4 minus 3 is 1, there aren't really any units, uh, it doesn't really have any meaning to it. 
an interval ratio, or sorry, an interval variable, consider something like the year that you're born. So if I look at, uh, so let's say you're born in 1993, I'm born in 1979. Uh, so here the order matters. I've got the characteristics of an ordinal variable. I know that 1979 comes before 1993. And I can, in fact, look at the difference. So if I subtract one from the other, that difference is 14 years. So the units of measurement in that difference is the same as the units of measurement of each of the individual, obs uh, each of the individual data points. And so that interval has some value, it has some interpretation. Okay, so that gives us uh, everything for an interval variable. The next level and the last type of variable uh, is the ratio variable. As you might suspect at this point, this contains all of the characteristics of an interval variable, plus uh, now actually there's two differentiating characteristics. One is that the ratio matters. So one value divided by another value uh, has some specific uh, interpretation. Uh, and another important characteristic is that the zero matters. The, z the value of zero has some specific, uh, specific meaning. So for example, think about uh, how long this video is taking. Uh, how long is it taking to get through this video compared to how long do you wish this video was? So let's say that you're hoping here we're at uh, almost seven minutes. Let's say you're hoping this video is going to end uh, in seven minutes. But then in reality it takes, oh, let's say it takes 14 minutes to get through. So here I can look at these numbers and I can say, well, the interval has meaning. 14 minus 7, uh, here we've got 7 minutes uh, between these two data points, so that has some meaning. It's measured in the same units. Uh, I can look also at the ratio, or one value divided by another, and say, well, if it takes 14 minutes, 14 divided by 7, it means that the video is twice as long uh, as I'm hoping uh, it's going to be. I suppose you'll be somewhat disappointed if it comes out to be twice as long as what you're hoping for. Uh, but this is what we mean when we look at a ratio variable, is that we can say it's twice as much, it's half as much, it's three times as much. Those The ratio has uh, some additional meaning. Now, when I say zero matters, it means that if this variable takes on the value of zero, uh, it means that the variable does not exist uh, at that point. So if this video uh, is zero minutes, uh, really it means that the video doesn't take place. It means that the video doesn't exist uh, if it is in fact zero minutes. Okay, so hopefully that helps to illustrate some of the, the differences between all of these different variables uh, that we're looking at. So we can scroll back up here and uh, apply this now to our data set that we're looking at. So for part C, what type of measurement scale uh, is used for each variable? So here if we look at uh, engine size, is this uh, nominal? Well, there's a name, there's a label, there's something there. So yes, it's nominal. Is it ordinal? Uh, well, yeah, I can rank these, uh, these engine sizes. You know, I know that uh, this 6.8 is certainly greater than this 3. Uh, in terms of, of the engine size. So yeah, it's it's a uh, ordinal, it meets that criteria. Uh, is it an interval variable? Well, yeah, again, I can look at, let's say those two values again, 6.8 and 3. So 6.8 minus 3, uh, that's 3.8. Engine size, I think, is measured in terms of liters. So that interval uh, certainly has some meaning as well. And if we consider the ratio, uh, let's pick uh, 3 and 1.6. So I can look at the ratio between 3 divided by 1.6. So 3 divided by 1.6 is 1.875. So I can say that the BMW, the engine size is 1.875 times greater 
than the Hyundai Sonata. So the ratio matters on our engine size. So this one is a ratio. Now the same things can be said for cylinders. It's nominal. It's ordinal. I can rank these uh, elements. I can rank these cars based on the number of cylinders that they have. Uh, interval, I can look at the difference between any two. Six, six minus four, that's equal to two. Two cylinders difference, so that has meaning. Uh, similarly, I can look at the, the ratio. Uh, eight divided by four. So the, the ratio here is two. The Bentley has twice as many cylinders as the Mazda has. So this is also a ratio variable. Transmission. Well, right away I can see that it's a, a non-numeric data. So that rules out interval and it rules out ratio. Uh, so this is either a nominal or an ordinal uh, variable. I've only got two different uh, values. It's either automatic or it's manual. Uh, I can't see that there's really any way to rank these uh, in terms of the types of transmission. So that rules out ordinal. So this is then going to be a nominal variable. Uh, number of gears, here it's nominal, I've got information there. Uh, ordinal, yes, I can rank these vehicles in terms of the number of gears that they have. Interval, yes, we can look at the difference. One car has so many gears more or less than another car. Uh, and same thing we can do uh, with the engine size and cylinders. I can look at the ratio uh, between any two of these uh, eight. Let's say we compare this one has eight gears, this one has six gears. So eight divided by six is about 1.3 uh, repeating. So it has 1.3 times more gears. So this is also a ratio. Type of fuel, just like transmission, here I've got nominal information. The vehicle class, here I've got a nominal variable, but I can order these vehicles now by this, their size. So I have a small car, a large car, I know that that rank matters. It provides some additional information. So this is then an ordinal variable. City and highway miles per gallon, again these are ratio values. Model year, model year. This is just like the example that I used uh, earlier on. Here I can order these based on newest uh, to oldest cars and similarly I can look at the difference between any two to see how many years older or how many years newer uh, is one car relative to another. So this is our interval variable. Okay, so that gets us through part C of this problem. Now I'm almost coming up on 14 minutes, which is what I hoped this video wouldn't uh, turn out to be. So I'm going to uh, end this one and uh, we'll pick up a third video then uh, and get through part D of this problem to identify variables that are quantitative uh, and variables that are categorical. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.